Now we've got to do is pop round and tidy up any little areas where um, perhaps we've got some overspray to take care of. Um, any areas of a pattern you'd want to change, um, you can go round and do those. And generally tidying up the entire the model, um, perhaps cutting in some overspray areas where it's not particularly nice. And go around all the model and pick out any areas where you need to change. It can be anything literally from you're not happy with the design of the pattern, perhaps you've missed a bit, um, you know, all the, the other bits. So you can just pop around and just tidy up all those little areas that you've missed. Um, and then next it's going to have uh, be masked up all down the sides. We're going to take the wings off, I'll mask it all up and then we'll paint the black. Next we've got the black to go on. So what we'll do, we'll start on the fuselage. And so press down those edges again. Make sure you're all, the masks are all nice and tight and you're happy with how it's all sitting because this is going to be your last chance now to make any adjustments. Now, I've already got loaded up in the airbrush some XF1 black, which is the flat black. Now, it might be better to use a slightly semi-gloss um, or a satin finish black, but because we're going to weather it, I need it to have a little bit of bite to be able to do that and then afterward before we actually go into decaling we'll have to um, give it a couple of gloss coats which we'll do anyway. So here we go, we're in with the black, this is where the fun starts. So being careful because we've got a full colour cup. Quite a high pressure on the airbrush. Remember, every now and again, it's best just to cut to air and lay down some air just to dry where you go, and that way you'll stop any large runs building up. So there we go, as you can see, we're all black now, but we're all very wet. So what we'll do is we'll put that to one side. We balance that between a couple of, like that. And then obviously we've just got to do the same on the wings. That's that job done. So next we've got to see what we've got and we'll see how it's come out. So if we unmask, very carefully. We can see what we got. Always a bit of a nervous time. Two things. One, you know, you're hoping you haven't taken the paint with it, which was always a a worry and you're also hoping that nothing's bled took those out if we hoping that nothing's bled through and there we go Lancaster part of the way done so that's the the paintwork for the, the main body see I'm being a little because literally I've only just finished painting these which is one of the beauties with acrylic because obviously if you were using enamels you'd have to wait now a long time for it to dry so if we carefully pop the wing on it will give us our first look of how we're going to actually be I'll get you in focus there so we're looking like something like that. So what we're going to do, um, we'll get the other bits unmasked and sorted out, and then we can um, give it a flat coat, sorry, a um, coat of clear future, um, and then we can decal. We'll get the decals on, 
and then we'll sort out all the rest of the glass bits and working our way through all those final bits and pieces, the undercarriage, and then we're going to do a little bit more weathering. But the light is at the end of the tunnel, so we can see we've done these as well. So they're all dry, still wet. So everything's completely dry now. Um, to be honest, it's overnight here, it's next morning. Um, Obviously now I've unmasked, um, you can look it all over and make sure you're all okay. As you can see it's come out nice and flat and even. Top coat looks lovely and it's amazing the difference of colour as well. When say totally dry, sometimes you might think, oh, you know, not quite sure about that colour. And then, my word, that's a tight fit, but it's a very nice fit and you probably wouldn't even need any glue there. The tails are still a little bit looser. But yeah, it's surprising when models completely dry, the difference in colour, um, little things like when you're doing pre-shading and things like that, you can find you come back to it an hour later and it looks totally, totally different to how you saw it. So there we go, there's the, the Lancaster all done, nice and black, flat black underneath and we're quite nice on top. Now what I'm going to do now, we're going to give this a coat of clear, um, which is just literally the clear um, or future if you're in the US or comes under lots of other names it's just an acrylic clear floor gloss now um, why do people use this uh, basically it's cheap I, know I use a lot of it I go through a bottle of this every couple of months yeah I know other people who've had it for months and you know literally years on one bottle I spray it neat I don't delete uh, dilute it spray the entire model because what that actually does two things for acrylics Firstly, it will protect it because using acrylic paints, they're prone to scratching. You know, you catch it with your nail, you catch it with a bit, or just you're handling perhaps the leading edges of the wings, you can wear them out. A coat of acrylic will stop that. Um, this is touch dry within literally um, a few seconds. Um, it's handleable within a minute, but if you're going to be using a wash, um, perhaps not my wash as such, uh, but other people's wash, I would leave it to dry for 24 hours. Um, my wash, you could, the Pro Modelers one, um, you can put straight on top of it after about an hour and it'll be fine. Um, but other people's, because it might look dry, but sometimes it sticks and then you use another wash or weathering techniques and it welds to the clear. So we're just going to give this a quick clear coat and let it dry and then we can leave this to one side and start working on the glass. The other thing we need to do um, with this particular one is that the Bombay and the wheel bays um, come in one part just like this so I've moved your angle around a bit now um, it, the easiest way to do this is to score it straight down so if you just do a line like that pushing quite firmly okay do just like that and then literally pull apart and it will break down the seam go halfway and then back on itself and you have your two halves and then obviously you've got your rough bit here there's quite a, a large join in between so using the rough side first we just sand that off and then when we're getting close to where we want to be we use the sand finer side and like that now the other way you could do it if you've got a, a sheet of um, sandpaper or something like that you can put it down hold the part um, and we can do it like that so and then we just give it a bit of a rub and there's your your parts done with minimal fuss okay then here's the tricky bit um, as we know when you get clear um, turrets or where are you? Yeah. Um, when you get clear turrets and things like that they can be a right pain when you're trying to mask them so over the years I think I've tried most things um, from mask oils to you know tapes <coughs> various ways of doing it now when you're doing something quite complex especially on something like this which doesn't actually have any panel marks so you can't tell really where the windows go and where they don't so one way I found of doing it is if you take your Tamiya tape, now I've spoken about this on other videos as well, I can show you all at the same time, which is probably going to be something down here, 
So you put one piece of tape over, whole tape. Don't worry about trimming it because you're going to need it for masking anyway. All right. And then comes your other bit of tape. Move a little bit short there. Then, as you can see, you make your line, and then what you actually do is spray that. So, what we do is we just make sure it's so when you're happy with its exact location of how it's sitting and resting, and all your other bits and pieces. We're not worried about down the back. Then all we do, we'll get our drop of flat black. So okay, we got that masked flat black paint. Don't use gloss because otherwise it will take too long to dry. Doing it our usual way of neat. Okay. Make sure you're all happy with how it's going to be. So just blow in that area, then cut to air, totally dry it off, okay, unmask, keep your bits of tape, don't actually get rid of them because you can use them time and time again, now I know this is going to be really tricky for you to see, and you're going to have to sort of trust me on this, um, but as you can see we've got our black line on the top there, really can't see if you're going to see that too well when we've got the finished article you probably will but that's a nice thin black straight line because it's flat black it's dried almost straight away so then we can literally within a few minutes we can then do the other side so it'll be the same type of thing again we'll just put the tape on line it all up how you like obviously using your references if there's no marks or anything else like that Okay, so we just go like that, and then we just spray the other side. Remember every now and again to cut to air, because we don't want any cooling. I'm slightly rushing this a bit, because I want to show you without hanging around but there we go that's two lines on the top done and then obviously we'll work around all the rest of the framing doing exactly the same way um, as we go so that's the basics and what I'll do is when I get to another a good bit so to speak I'll show you again there we go there's those done as I say if you follow that process of making each line it takes a long time to do but certainly for the um, rear turret here there's no guides really for where the panels are so by using um, some photo references or book references you can work out where they are and put your own in and not worry about it and you can make nice sharp crisp lines um, you know certainly like on this one um, very nice very clear parts and it looks very impressive but it really doesn't take that long it just takes a little bit of time um, and make sure you're happy from where you've placed it don't forget as I always say it's acrylic if you don't like it rub it off with your nail and you're good to go again what else have we done whilst you've been away let's bring you out okay all well, we've really done we've painted up the wheels as I say that's normal tire paint what I do for tire paint is normal um, XF1 flat black and then I add to it probably um, what are we talking here about three parts black to one part sort of grey a medium grey and what that does it gives you that sort of rubbery look instead of being flat black so we've done that We've done the props as well, um, they're done. Bring you in again, there we go. Okay, there we go, they're done. Just simple, they are gloss black. I've done those gloss because they tend to be a slightly different shade. The tips on the, the wing, on the end, that's very easy. That's literally, I unscrew the cap. And just move those and I'm gonna show you. Okay, you have your flat yellow in the cap, shake it, get it to the right depth, test it with a cocktail stick to make sure you've got the right sort of depth of how far you want it to come up the prop and then when you've done that you can literally just do this all I do dip it in hold it for a few seconds lift it out gently onto the paper towel dab to take the blob off the end the paint sticks 
then to the tip like that and away you go quite simple way of doing it it saves a lot of flapping around by putting tape on and various other bits and pieces so that's now done um, for this particular Lancaster the tails are a very deep sort of rusty red color um, so I've sprayed those very simple just a mask dump down the middle and then each side was red moving on to decaling now right at the end of the tunnel so to speak now for this particular bomber you hardly get any decals at all really um, second world war aircraft weren't as heavily decaled because of not having much electronics and various bits and pieces now we've already spoken briefly about the kit decals whoops he says throwing them around and here they are um, they all looked very nice but the trouble with you'll find with kit decals um, especially perhaps from the, the cheaper makes shall we say and that the registry can be a bit hit and miss when we say registry sometimes um, the white parts won't line up with the blue parts or the yellow parts or the red parts and then what happens is if it's slightly off of what register you tend to get that sort of um, perhaps it's uh, like a white outline around the edges and various bits and pieces um, and things like that now I happen to have here some decals from a aftermarket manufacturer from Aeromaster and I've always liked this one down at the bottom here with a red tail um, so we're going to do that one <clears throat> the thing you'll tend to find with aftermarket decals they tend to be very high quality basically if they weren't nobody would buy them and they wouldn't last in business um, but there's certainly a handful of manufacturers Aeromaster, two bobs, people like that fighter down decals for another nice company afterburner decals um, they spend a lot of time and a lot of money investing in doing the design work and making sure they're all okay so you know hats off to those guys because they do a fantastic job most of them you'll find a small you know cottage industries as well these aren't huge companies making these decals they're usually guys out there doing their own research and their own design work so you say hats off to those right what we've got is a bowl of warm water which I have here um, I've got my normal scissors but also I have these scissors now these are decoupage scissors or decoupage um, the thing is they're fantastic for cutting the film clear film if you try and use a normal pair of scissors to cut the the decal once it's not on the backing paper they, sometimes they tear they rip these decoupage scissors fantastic now I know I've already covered a, a video on decaling and all the rest of it so we'll just give you the basic run through for this what we'll do is we'll cut out each decal as is required dip it 20 seconds into the water leave it floating flying in the air and we'll run like that so now it's time for the wash the mos uh, models had a complete um, gloss coat of future about an hour ago now there's two ways of doing this because this is sort of a um, introduction into modeling as well as the monthly model build I'm going to do it sort of a way for a beginner to do it um, now there's lots of ways of doing washes around and funnily enough I'll promote my wash which is the pro modelers wash um, it's clay based it's very very safe very easy to use um, basically wash goes on wash comes off you're guaranteed it to work every time unlike if you're trying to do other oil acrylic uh, oil washes or acrylic washes and all the rest of it um, a few things to put right it is not paint um, it is not acrylic it's clay with natural pigments and it's all natural things and there's a natural degreaser agent in there as well to help the flow apart from that there's a couple of other little bits which are all natural which means it's totally safe and you could even drink it so anyway what we've got is the dark wash and the light wash now people often ask me what's the best way to do camouflage patterns um, if it's darker than if it's lighter than black I would say use the dark wash on its own if it's black dark blues things like that I would say use the light wash and then obviously because you can mix the two they can be mixed to any ratios you like together to make any shade so what we'll do we'll do the top half to start with so you just take your model and brush it everywhere very very simple anywhere that's brown or green gets a coat of wash you literally just slap it all over 
work it into the paintwork if needed. Sometimes it might not stick because we're on gloss coats here. But working everywhere, anywhere that's dark, we'll take these tails off. Ah, how do you go in there? It's nice, you glue chap. Um, goes on here, just like that. Now you could speed things up with a hairdryer and whip a hairdryer around the uh, model to help it dry. Just make sure everything's dry first. And remember to always do a range of glass areas as well because it's not so bad on a gloss paintwork like this, but if you're using the wash on a flat um, surface, it does tend to stain and dirty as it goes. Consequently, if you forget, you end up having trouble. So there we go, we just do it all over the model like that. We'll just let that dry now. It's been in the dryer now for about um, 10 minutes, but normally it takes about 20 minutes to dry. There's just a few little pools underneath various bits and pieces. Um, basically, when I did the wash and made the wash and doing the colours and working out the pigments and various things, um, I tried to make a dirt wash. Now, the idea was that the colour would work with NFM. Um, and I've always been quite happy the way it came out and really doing this type of pattern shows it off to a, its best. So, you get your kitchen towel into your little square. So if you just get a, a thing and then do it into squares like that. I'm sure you've all seen the demos on the wash, so I won't go too much into it. <clears throat> As you can see on the front here, um, it looks like quite a nice dirty colour on the black, but the trouble is what happens is when you put a lacquer coat or a flat coat over the top of it, obviously it gets darker, which means you won't see it as well. So we've got something else planned for that. Circular motions. Remember, moist, not wet. Most of it all off with round motions. Get it off like that and then obviously for your final just make sure you brush in the direction of the airflow. Now that's it all off the top so what we're going to do we're going to take the dark and some of the light and we're going to mix the two for the underside so if we just get a bit of the dark just in like that and what we're going to do we're going to mix it about 50 50 with the light and then you just mix these two colours together and we're going to come out with a, a grey colour. Now don't forget it will darken down once the wash is on. That said, for me that's a little too light so we can just dampen that down a bit more. Take that down a couple of shades. That's all I like it. Right, okay, so now we're going to do everywhere underneath. Same thing, we just brush it all over the underside the same way as we did for the top. So as you can see now it's all gone very white underneath. Remember with your wash, keep your wash, bung it in another bottle, last year for ages. Right okay that's the plugs out of the way then for the wash, I promise I won't mention it again. Available off the website. Right okay. Where were we? Uh, wash off. Okay, here we go. Same thing. Um, the other thing with the wash as well, I've got a little drying bay um, which I can regulate the temperature very well on it, but also you can always just whip over it with a hairdryer. It literally just takes a few seconds to dry like that if you just wanted to speed things up. So we're going to take it off and I hope you can see that already. It gives it a very nice look. Remember, don't worry about it looking a bit too uh, light at the moment because obviously when we got the wash on there it will completely darken it up it won't look quite as in your face that's the wash off then um, so next thing we do is just have a quick look all over it then we're going to give it a flat coat right away over the entire model one thing to remember with the wash especially on the white is to make sure it's all off if there's any areas where there's still a little bit of white don't forget as soon as it gets the wash on uh, the flat coat onto it it will accentuate it even more um, so that's something just to remember so as you can see we've got quite nice 
panelling now all over so I'm going to give this a flat coat and then we're on for final assembly <laughs> 